huge fan. Massive fan. Get a little giddy talking about it. Voice just went really loud and high. That scene reminds me of, there was one, in one scene very early on, there was a prop where I had a grape juice. And because the prop master made the grape juice box, I just always knew that that, that um, prop was on deck. So I just always would ask for the grape juice. And what ended up happening is that when I watched the series, I literally have grape juice in my hands every single scene. <laughs> so it basically became like another arm. I just, that, and that was the first scene where, you, where I got the grape juice. So that's what I thought of. What comes I to mind are the killers. Oh, I remember when people first got the iPod. What was it? It was Nano. like that chubby one. No, it was like that chubby guy first. <gasps> like, yeah, my friend had a green one, and it was just the coolest thing. And we used to listen to Blink One Eight Two and Busted. I guess it's a, a version of my first time public speaking. But to do it as Astrid is actually so much fun. I mean, to stand on this plinth and again, trying not to spoil anything. Um, to kind of assign yourself to something like that so publicly, openly, the way that she speaks. Um, some, most people, I think, would be very self-conscious in that situation. I don't think Astrid experiences that as a feeling, ever. Um, so it's, it was kind of amazing to go up there and do it like that, especially with um, Ronnie, who plays Sky. It was a lot of fun. America's Hope. sweetheart, angel god. Yeah. Her recent feud with the president of the United States. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chrissy Teigen. That's like Infinity's world. Right? Yeah, I love them. Have you ever worn them? I've, not I've never them. actually tried any on. Okay. Did you prior to Infinity? Like you'd had a Crocs experience before as well. I have many colors. Also, you do. You're a Crocs owner too. Huge Crocs owner. Yes. Yeah, and then also Birkenstocks makes uh, yeah. rubber. Birkenstocks <laughs> that are like Crocs. Adult Crocs. Yeah, and they're, I mean, you're just wearing water shoes, not in the water, it's awesome. <laughs> but if you Freedom. were to go from land to water, you could. You could. You could. Yeah, you're like a seaplane. Yeah. That's the dream. <laughs> Louis Deutsch live in the dream. You get what I'm, you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, they're good. I like Crocs and socks though, infinity style. Yeah. By the way, we were just in, uh, they did this display of the Oh yeah, the costume of the clothes, and three people came up to look at the tag of Infinity's shirt, and they were like, "Oh, I thought it was Gucci." <laughs> I was like, mm -mm. "Oh my god!" I was like, "No, it's not from right. no." Okay. <laughs> I'd never been to a Bubba Gumps before, um, and we have a Bubba Gumps moment in that Times Square scene, so that was a lot of fun. It was just, I, just a trip to be filming there in general, and on such a small scale. I mean. You usually assume, I guess, for Glee and stuff, they would close down an area, and for us, they didn't. So it was just like handheld camera running through Times Square up on the steps and stuff. It was, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, because in New York, it's interesting. They don't have to have, it's unlike other, most places in America or anywhere where you film, you don't need permits to shoot unless you have trucks. Really? So that's why you can just shoot. It was free. It's great. It was amazing. First thing that comes to mind, it's immeasurable to know the impact that seeing a woman run has on millions mm. and millions of little girls for the rest of time. Um, mm. I was watching the documentary Fahrenheit 11.9 recently, and they do, they have this whole moment um, filming people who had just voted for a woman to be president for the first time. And they, like you're saying, just seeing that impact on such a mass of humans. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, it's something you can't really walk away from, it's, yeah. Yeah. Huge fan, massive <laughs> fan, get a little giddy talking about it. Voice just went really loud and high. Uh, just know every, every word to every song. Um, I've been every single one of her tours, at least twice. Yeah, yeah I'm going to the New York show too, you should come. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she was great. Anyway, I just love Ariana Grande. I do learn something new every day. I what? I love Ariana. Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry. Ariana so Grande sorry. and Drake are my like. Oh yeah, yeah. No, but I knew Drake. Okay. I didn't know the Ariana thing. Yeah. I feel bad for the ones in LA because they have so much fur and it's yeah. hot, and they're they want to be in Alaska. Surely that's uh, that's actual cruelty. 
I know, to be taken out of your environment. I know, poor Husky is... That's a triggering picture. That is probably one of my, uh, the, one of like the best gifts even of my whole professional career is getting to meet him and work with him. He's become, he'll be in my wedding, so if that says anything. Damn. I mean, I won't be marrying him, he, he's not interested in that, <laughs> unfortunately, but I. He'll, he'll be somewhere in your wedding. Yeah, he'll be probably planning the bachelorette. He's just, oh, hell yeah. he plans so well. That's another, another thing we should yeah. talk about. Well, he was really great with bringing everyone together as well. I mean, at the very beginning when everyone was kind of being cast one by one and moving to L.A. one by one, he was the kind of curator of making sure everybody knew each other, getting, together, getting everyone together for dinners and meetups. We went to his house in Malibu. We went to Disneyland at one point, and it was all kind of his orchestration. And I think that's what also made the series so much fun to shoot and so much richer of an experience because we were all able to be so close and that's probably thanks to him.